Hey, welcome to Striving Artist. I am your host, Arlene, and here we chat with incredible creative people that are making a living off of their awesome art. And we're here in Mississauga at an incredible place called Modern Ink Tattoos. And I've got Stan Lai here, owner, operator, and one of the main tattoo artists here with me on the show. Thank you so much for being here, man. Oh, nice to well, meet you. Thank you for having us, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure's mine. Pleasure's mine. This is awesome. So on our show, I like to introduce our audiences to different kind of artists like yourself. And I just want you to kind of take us briefly through your history of going into a full-time job that was not anywhere near what you're doing today into something that is now your own. Absolutely, absolutely. So long story short, um, as you can, as you know, like um, I, as I was telling you before, um, I come from a super taboo cultured Asian family. Mm -hmm. um, tattoos were super unacceptable. Um, it's 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 gang related in in, 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 in in where we're from back in the day and it was just a super taboo subject um, and never mind to put it on yourself but to even talk about tattoo in an Asian household okay. is super unacceptable and just uh, frowned upon mm -hmm. um, and I've always found love just from I guess uh, art form or different types of art forms to kind of um, um, find confidence in, in, in different people and myself and that type of stuff. Right. Um, Were you drawing a lot growing up too? Draw, growing up, I, I was heavy, heavy into art. Um, yeah. I was always drawing. I was not playing with video games or anything like that. Right. Anytime you looked at me, you, you saw me in a restaurant with my family or anything like that. I was in the corner drawing cars mm -hmm. or little skeletons or different stuff like that. So right. I've always had a weird obsession with drawing. And, um, and is it something that kind of calmed you down? Was it like a stress relief or was it just uh, something absolutely. that you're like... So I've always been, even when I was little, I've suffered from a lot of anxiety. Okay. Um, I didn't know how to cope with the anxiety and all these, all these feelings and emotions that I had in my body. And the best way to release it for me was always to draw. Nice. It was always just to draw something on a piece of paper or doodle, whether I'm, I'm completing the art piece or not, just doodling something on a piece of paper that kind of expresses how I'm feeling at that moment. Right. And it would always, always indirectly or directly help me with my anxiety. Um, wow. And I actually didn't know this until further down when people were actually diagnosing me and then they realized that um, one of the main like uh, one of the main things that happened helped with yeah. my anxiety was drawing nice. and just having my own space there and just kind of zoning out and not caring what the outside world is doing or thinking and just focusing on my task right and your background before you opened up your shop so before I opened up my shop, I, I was like everyone else. I did uh, tons of jobs from landscaping to the fitness industry, right. to the corporate world, um, just doing a bunch of stuff. Um, I was, I didn't know where I belonged in this world. Okay. Um, I didn't know what my parents' expectations was. Well, I didn't know what their expectations was. It was to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, to be one of those categories where right. uh, a typical Asian family would want you to be, right? Mm -hmm. um, and throughout that time, were you drawing? Did throughout you that time, I was always drawing. Yeah. I was always very interested in meeting people and, and, and getting their ideas of what they wanted me to draw and cool. this type of stuff, right? Yeah. Um, so as I was working just job to job, um, I realized that um, my passion is really just, just, I get a gratification of just uh, seeing people smile when they see my art form right. or, or um, getting a new tattoo and, and just seeing the, the gratification that they get from the result of right. it. Right. And with that too, you, you put in your, like your hard earned talent and love into those, those drawings Absolutely. that are on them now. Absolutely. And, and with tattoos, why I really love this industry is because um, you can really help a lot of people in many different ways. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people come in to cover up scars. Um, oh, okay. Deep, deep, deep scars, either physical or emotional or mental. Right. Um, so when you're tattooing a new piece on them, you're, you're helping them recover from a certain time of their life that was a huge struggle. And when they leave here, a lot of clients, when we have covered up a scar, whether it's a physical scar and an emotional scar, mm -hmm. they literally leave here crying and tearing. Wow. And it's just a sense of, it's, it's a huge but sense of gratification. Not from the pain though. Not from the pain, not from the pain. <laughs> just get that right. <laughs> we do have people crying from the pain as well. <laughs> but it, it, it's, it's, it's really cool to see how you can really help people um, 
fix themselves and, and kind of find confidence within themselves through art. Right, I like that cool. a lot because um, a lot of the um, people that we've we've had on the show is just talking about basically like the facts of how they got from where they were right. to where they are now. But like this one's a little bit more um, emotional and um, like I guess spiritual and like Absolutely. mentally as well. Absolutely. Um, talk to us about your transition transition from like right before you decided to have your own shop to where you were before. Yeah, so I was actually working uh, in the staffing business. Um, so I was actually already in, I've always liked to do find jobs where I'm helping someone one way or the other. That's okay. the type of person I am. I'm a Pisces, I'm just overly sensitive and just, anyway, still wanna ramble on about <laughs> that. Um, so I was in the staffing business. Okay. Um, so I was helping people land careers, not just jobs. Um, so I was helping right. people find uh, their avenue where they could excel in life and just really find a career and grow. And with that, I, I always got a sense of gratification from um, their happiness in life, um, better paychecks. Right. Um, just, just the quality of life is improving mm -hmm. after they have met me, right? Right. Um, so I was just working there, grinding every day, grinding and grinding. Um, and there was actually this one day where uh, it was a Monday um, and every Monday we have these branch meetings in the office where there's about a hundred people we're standing there, we're regrouping about our week. And uh, I just had a weird epiphany that day. I, I was texting my girlfriend and I just had this weird realization in my head that everyone is a zombie here, nobody likes their job. <laughs> and it's just like, it, it's part of the corporate politics where everyone's kind of fake, everyone's kind of fake it till you make it type of thing. And, yeah. and, and nobody has any compassion for anyone. Um, if you're gonna make a sale, you're gonna step on your coworkers toes to kind of get there type of thing. Right. And um, I was super against that because I'm a, at the end of the day, I'm a very people's person. I like the compassion and empathetic side of mm -hmm. humans. Yes. Um, so my mentor actually asked me, he's like, what would you do if you were to kind of hop away from this one day? And I was sitting there and I was just kind of just expanding on how much I love art and just, art form and, and just helping people find confidence. Right. Um, and then full circle comes around, uh, next thing you know, um, this great tattoo idea has came to my head that I would open up my own shop. Wow. Um, and it's really weird because I, I, I used to have tattoos back in the day about 10 to 15 years ago where it was super, super unacceptable. Right. Um, it was taboo. You were seen as a criminal or a delinquent if you had tattoos. Um, but I realized that in 2019, it's a little bit different nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, it's a real art form. Yes. And going back to what I was saying, I just really get a sense of gratification of helping people find confidence within an art form. Right. Whether it's covering up a scar or putting something um, super sentimental to them, mm -hmm. whether it's a date or a portrait or anything like that, um, I just feel like this is where I was meant to be. Right. And, um, and just really engaging with our customers and seeing how happy they are at That's the end cool. of the day, right? Nice. And, and it all comes back to art. Right, exactly. <laughs> what I really loved even when I was a little, little boy mm -hmm. in the corner drawing. That's awesome. <laughs> and just quickly, I wanted to touch on, you were just saying how, you know, you grew up in an Asian household, they wanted you to do the, the you know, doctor. Um, and just give us um, where you're at now with that. Like, um, you know, you've got this great shop now. Absolutely. Um, you still have your family around you and your, right. your people that um, had those ex expectations from you. How do you feel now, like doing something that you absolutely love? So my family means everything to me and more. Mm -hmm. um, their opinion means more than anyone else in this world. So it was super hard for me to kind of accept that it wasn't acceptable in their eyes. Right. But in today, to answer your question, in today's time, if we're talking about today, yep. my mom is super supportive Good. of my venture. Nice. Um, she actually makes jokes now. She, in her little Asian accent, she'll be like, I love tattoos. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, and, and, and actually two weeks ago, I finally convinced her to get a tattoo on herself, a little cross, um, and this would, <laughs> 10 years ago, 15 years ago, this would have never happened. Right. My first tattoo, she's chased me on a around the house with a cheese grinder, oh. thinking that she was gonna scrape off my tattoo with a cheese grinder, oh my gosh. no joke. Wow. And uh, for her to come up to me last week or two weeks ago and say, Stan, I think I'm ready for my own tattoo, that's amazing. was a huge deal for that's me. A, that, that story huge gave me deal. goosebumps. Yes, I do because, have goosebumps as well. Because I think that's a great way um, to kind of end off this first segment because I think with time, 
once you follow your own passion, then that's what we're hoping to, uh, to everything you know, promote. Everything else falls in place. Exactly. Yes. Oh, that is so Always cool. Always do what you love and yes. everything will come to place. And it's super, super generic to say, uh, you never work a single day in your life if you love what you do, but, but I swear to God, it is true. Yeah, it I really agree. is true. Awesome. That's cool, yeah. So I just want to like ask you, like, what was your first tattoo? My first tattoo was actually this tattoo right here. Um, it's a five letter word, faith. So I woke up one day, yeah. um, I was 14 years old. Oh, um, wow. I had a fake ID, <laughs> which is super frowned upon. Were now, you this tall then? I, absolutely so, not, okay. I was probably half your height. Okay. <laughs> no, not half your height, but I was yeah. not stretched out yet. Right. <laughs> okay. um, and I woke up one day and I just said, I really, really, really want a tattoo. Right. Um, even though I had tons of stuff planned and drawn out, mm -hmm. I ended up getting a five letter word, which was faith. That's cool. <laughs> that must mean a lot to you then. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. It's just to always have faith in whatever you believe in, right. your family, um, your, your morals and values. And For just sure. obviously I can expand a lot more and s s justify the tattoo. Mm -hmm. um, but with, also with a lot of the meanings, I was also young and dumb. <laughs> um, so I just kind of chose a five letter word that would fit well right. in here, but it's that a, fits with my life. It's a good starting tattoo, I think, because like some people might get like a, I don't know, um, like, like a weed animal. Or, <laughs> yeah, like oops. Or like um, something not good, yeah. <laughs> but that, that ties in the whole, your whole story, it seems like, you know, you had um, this, this underlying faith of your art, Absolutely. and now you are creating your your life with it right um is there a tattoo that you have that you actually drew or most of them that yes that i actually have a tattoo right here um i don't want to start taking off too much of my clothes <laughs> in front of the cameras uh, but i have this over here that i personally that you designed drew and drew um what so it, it also goes back to what I really believe in, morals and values. Um, I, I'm, yeah. I'm Catholic. Um, I was born and raised Catholic. Right. Uh, my parents are super, not I wouldn't say super religious, um, but they definitely attend church. And mm -hmm. um, we have always been engraved that that is our faith and our morals and values. Yeah. Um, so I feel like that was super, super meaningful to me. Right. Um, and yeah, that's probably one of my favorite tattoos. Right. <laughs> and when we were here, um, you, you're seven months into having the shop open. Yes. Um, is there something that you anticipated that that didn't happen, or something that you're like, "Whoa, I didn't realize it would happen within these these months"? Is there something? Absolutely. Um, the growth of the business has been tremendous. Um, mm -hmm. Has been unexplainable. Um, obviously, it, it's it's definitely. I, I have to thank the community within uh, the shop. Right. Without the community, we can never succeed. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely what caught me off guard, not caught me off guard, but what kind of uh, was a surprise to me of was how fast we got everything going. Right. Um, the relationships that we have built with our clientele nice. that has, our, our clients always turn into our friends. We don't call them clients, we call them friends. That's cool. <laughs> and we, we just really have a good culture within the shop. Um, and, and I love it. Our, our, our staffs are all on the same page. Mm -hmm. um, we are all artists that want to strive in different aspects of life. Right. Um, we're always trying to accelerate our art skills, our personal um, communication skills towards the customers, and just really growing this amazing brand that we That's have here. Cool. Yeah. Wow. And just for fun, like, what's the um, most bizarre thing that someone's asked you to? to design or? So uh, um, the most bizarre, th that is a very good question. Um, and I actually have a great answer for that because last week actually we got an inquiry. Um, someone turned 33 years old. Okay. Um, and she wanted a 33 tattooed on her cheek. And not just on the corner of the eye, um, she wanted on her cheek. She does have an appointment booked. Not sure if she's gonna show up. <laughs> But that is, that very is interesting. probably, I, I can't say bizarre, but, but definitely the most interesting, interesting inquiry yeah. that we have had to date. <laughs> that, that's very interesting, interesting and yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, that is. So if you ever see a 33 on someone's face out there, like, oh, no. it was done by us. <laughs> What, is there something that's very common that people get? Yes. Um, so we do, it's, it's funny that you ask this, we do a lot of um, cute, dainty scripts. 
uh, the word family, loyalty. Oh, okay. <laughs> Those are super popular. Uh, we do a lot of florals. Um, we do a lot of um, Catholic tattoos. Right. Um, and we do a lot of um, realism portraits. A lot of people like to pay tribute or commemorate their loved ones. Oh, that's or nice. even their pets. Um, so we do a lot of portraits here cool. as well. Excellent. Yeah. Well, this has been amazing. Absolutely. Thank you Absolutely. so much for chatting with us. Thank you yeah. so much for coming here and chatting with me as well. Of course, no problem. Make sure you guys check out Modern Ink Tattoos. You guys have to travel here to Mississauga to check this awesome place out, meet Stan and his staff. And don't worry, I've got that special thing that I've got prepared for you to really represent today's interview. Stay tuned.